All right, how's it going, y'all? This video is going to be on how to set up a Raspberry Pi to automatically connect back to an open VPN server hosted by Synology NAS. And this is done so that I can set up my hyper backup on a Raspberry Pi external to my network. In the last two videos, I've set up first how to set up a Raspberry Pi to boot off of a flash drive so that it's more resilient. And then the next one, I set up the same Raspberry Pi to become a rsync destination for Synology's hyper backup. This way we have a really great version control, encryption, as well as notifications if anything goes wrong for our backup solution, and it's overall just a lot easier. And so in this video, we're gonna be going over how to set up a Raspberry Pi to not only connect back automatically to Synology NASA's OpenVPN connection, but also be able to update automatically and reboot from time to time to make sure that it's always up to date, secure, and if any issues happen, hopefully it will automatically reboot and it will be fixed when it boots back up again. So we could do this with just the rsync protocol and open up that port on the remote network. However, this is a lot less secure and it actually requires you to open up that port on the remote network. We're going to be using the VPN server hosted on a Synology NAS instead that means the client does not have to open up a port. Only your home local network will have to open up a port, which means that one, you've got more control over it, and two, it's a lot more secure than just an rsync connection. rsync just uses username password authentication that we saw in the last step, and so it's really just not that secure to be opened up to the broad internet. However, if it's only hosted on your local network, this is really not that big of a deal because I assume your roommates are not going to try to brute force their way into your Raspberry Pi. All right, so in that last video, we left the Synology backing up via hyper backup to the Raspberry Pi, and it took only about six hours for about 1.75 terabytes. So it actually went really well because we're over a local network, and that Raspberry Pi 4 has a gigabit connection. So everything went really fast for the first backup. And that's why you really wanna do your first backup locally, is because it's just so much data all at once, it could literally take weeks to back up 10 terabytes of data across an internet connection, and that's just going to be really annoying to set up. Instead, you'll just be backing up the changes in data, which really is not going to be nearly as much data all at once, hopefully that is. Now, if you want to restore from this backup, you're probably going to want to end up driving and grabbing it, assuming it's within a drivable distance. However, you still could grab files one or two off of the remote server. It is just going to take a while to download those back, but in a pinch, you can definitely manage it. All right, and so as we can see here, if we go into hyper backup, we can see that that Raspberry Pi was successfully backed up. Oh, and it's about 1.5 terabytes. So it's really not that much initial data. I probably might actually open up some more folders to be backed up here, but at the same time, I've got this set up to be a bunch of version control. And so that way I can really go back if I need to for some of this data, which is a really nice feature to have. So the other thing that I've already done is set up an open VPN server. So if we go into VPN server, we'll see that it is hooked up and under privileges, only the Raspberry Pi has access to it. That's for security, and that way I only open up very specific people who I'd like access to it to get access to it. I use a L2TP VPN server hosted on my router for generally connecting back. So the obvious question is, well, why don't you just use that? Well, I'll be honest with you, it has been a huge pain. I spent almost all of yesterday trying to figure out how to set up L2TP over IPsec on a Raspberry Pi, and it just does not work very easily at all. And so instead, I'm gonna use OpenVPN, which is just as easy, and have it hosted there. Though, in a way, it is adding additional risk to my network technically, because now I have two different VPN servers rather than one, but it's a pretty minimal risk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that OpenVPN, and we're just going to export the configuration to download it. And that's it. So now this is all set up, and so now we're gonna go ahead and SSH back in that Raspberry Pi. All right, and so now what I actually need to do is I need to copy that OpenVPN file from my computer to my server. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up a new tab really quickly. That's on my local desktop. CD into the downloads folder. CD in that OpenVPN. And I'm going to copy this OpenVPN config using SCP from my local computer to my Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna do SCP. VPN config, and then I'm going to type in the pi colon tilde, and I'll just save it in my user's home folder. And just like that, it is transferred over. So if we go back and do an ls, we can see that it successfully was transferred over. 
So now we need to do a couple of configuration things here in this OpenVPN config file. So I'm gonna open up with nano. And all we need to do is change this remote your server IP to the actual one I'm using. And we're going to go down and I'm gonna change this line auth user paths to include secrets.config. This way we'll be storing the username and password in the secrets.config and we're gonna be using that for authentication instead. And that's all we had to do. So we're gonna do control X to exit, yes to save it, and to write it. And now what we need to do is install OpenVPN. So we're gonna just do a sudo apt update. And now a sudo apt install OpenVPN. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this to give us some space. And we can see we've got this VPN config file. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, but change the name from .openvpn to .config. That way it registers automatically. So we're gonna do sudo cp vpn config. We're going to move it to etc openvpn slash, and we'll call it vpn config .config. And so now if we cd into that folder, we can see that this openvpn.config file was created. And so now what we need to do is we need to create a secrets.config file in this same folder. So I'm going to do a sudo nano secrets.config. And it's going to be username pi, and the current password for this tutorial is 123456. Don't worry, I'm changing that. And control X to exit, yes, enter. And so now that should be set up. So now our open VPN connection should work automatically for us. So what we are gonna do just for best practices is do a sudo chmod 600 and secrets. That way we change only root has read or write to it and nobody else does. And so that's just best practice. It's not that much more secure, but it is best practice. And now the last thing we're going to do is have OpenVPN start on boot. So we're gonna sudo nano etc defaults slash OpenVPN. And all we're gonna to have to do is scroll down till we see an auto start. And so we're just going to delete the comment from auto start all. And so now it will automatically start for us. And so now that we've deleted that, we're gonna do control X to exit, Y to save it, enter to write it. And so now we just need to enable the surface. So we're gonna do sudo system control, enable open VPN. It probably has already started that, but it's always good to do. And now the last thing is to reload the datum in the same manner. All right, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and clear it to give us some space. All right, and so now all we're gonna do is do a sudo reboot to reboot a Raspberry Pi, and it should start up that VPN on boot. All right, and so after rebooting my Raspberry Pi, I just went ahead and SSH back in, and what we're gonna run is we're gonna go run an if config, and we should see right here that this tunnel zero exists, and we've got a, an IP address of 10.8.0.6. So that is perfect. We have successfully set it up and it's successfully connected back and even started up on boot. All right, and so now we've seen that it will automatically connect to this VPN server as soon as it boots up. And so now while we're still on here, I wanna do a couple of things in Cron tab to set it up so that it automatically resets and updates itself every week. That way, if anything happens, hopefully the reboot will reset it and it should be good. All right, and so now what we're gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna go ahead and clear it and give it some space and I want to make a script that automatically updates the Pi and reboots it. And then with CronTab, we're going to set it up so that it automatically gets run once a week. That way, if anything happens, it's probably fine and the reboot will probably fix it, hopefully. So to do this, I'm going to create a file with nano clean.sh. And so now I'm just going to do the usual bash script. All right, and so when we're setting up this bash script, we've got to give absolute paths to things because Kron runs things a little bit differently. So we've got to give a path to everything. So it's, we're gonna say user. So 
So first off, we're going to update it. Now we're going to uh, upgrade. And we're going to do a dash Y to make sure that it is run. And that way it doesn't say, hey, do you want to do this? Instead, it just says yes, no matter what. And finally, we're going to do the same. And finally, this will reboot it. So now let's go ahead and do control X to exit. Why save it? Yes. And now we're going to make sure it's executable. So we're going to do sudo chmod plus X for, to add executable and just call it clean. So now let's go ahead and try running it. So this should go through, update the packages, upgrade everything, and then go ahead and reboot the Pi. So we'll see what happens. So this is going to take a while because it's been a while since I've upgraded my packages. So we'll just let it run. All right, so while that Pi is updating, it's taking a while. The last thing we're going to want to do is create a static route from my router to the VPN address of my Synology. This way, any traffic from my local network that wants to reach the Raspberry Pi will know to go to the Synology first to get down that VPN tunnel. I explain it more in my OpenVPN Connect video for my Raspberry Pi, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description below. But we're just gonna go ahead and log into my Unify, and I'm gonna go into Settings, go down to Gateway, Static Routes, and I've actually already enabled it, but I'll go ahead and show it, and basically say that the destination network is the VPN address of my open VPN server. So as you can see here, 10.0.8.0 is the address and we know to forward any of that traffic to 10.0.1.40. And so that means any of my local traffic will be able to know how to get to this Raspberry Pi VPN server. And so that's what you have to set up to make sure this works. It's not a big deal for the hyper backup because the Synology itself will know, but for everything else, it's good to have. All right, and so we can see right here that the Raspberry Pi.local closed. That is perfect. So now we're going to SSH back in. And now let's see if config. And perfect, we are successfully connected. So that means our script successfully is run. We're just going to need to do two different things real quick. We're going to first make sure that only the root has access to it. So we're going to do sudo chown and that clean.sh. So that way we, only the root has access to it. And now we're going to do a sudo chmod. So this way only the owner has read write executable to it and nobody else has any access to it, which is exactly what we want. So now nobody else will be able to open it. So if I do a cat clean.sh, permission denied. This is just a security thing. So nobody modifies this file and is able to do things with root access. It's just good practice. So now I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And we're going to use cron tab to run that script. And we're going to make sure to do sudo cron tab to make sure we're root dash e to edit. And I'm going to use nano. And so now I'm going to have this reboot once a week. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say that at 12, zero, so that is going to be noon, and then any day, any month. And then for the weekday, we're going to do Sundays, which is zero. We're going to run, and that should do it. So we're going to say home pi user, which is the path to that, clean.sh, and it should just execute it there. So we're going to do control X to exit, Y to save it, and to write it. All right, and so now that is actually all we have to do to set it up. And so now what I am going to do is I'm going to put it on a remote network to make sure I can still access it. All right, so I just went downstairs and hooked up my Raspberry Pi to my phone's hotspot. This means that it's completely remote to my network. And as you can see here, it is successfully connected back and so everything is working great. And so now all we have to do is go ahead and edit our backup task in Hyper Backup. So we see right here that the IP address is 10.8.0.6. So we're going to go into Hyper Backup and edit this right here. I'm going to change this IP address from 10.0.0.7 to 10.8.0.6, which is that IP address of the Raspberry Pi when it's connected through the VPN server. So I'm going to go in right here and click edit, target, and change that IP address. 
and click OK. And right here it says online and so that means it worked perfectly. Now it's going to go ahead and be able to do this all automatically and so I can just leave that at a friend's house and it will automatically set up backups for myself without me having to do anything. Plus now that we've got hyper backup, it will give me a notification anytime that the task fails, meaning I will always know what's going on. Finally, the Raspberry Pi will automatically reboot every week and update. So that means that if there are any critical security vulnerabilities or anything like that, it'll automatically set that all up for us. It's a really great setup. All right, well now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to change all those passwords and set this up. So go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one, bye.